Hello everybody and welcome once again to Boosted New, baby! We're on the freaking Turbo High Boosted today, and I'm going to be talking about whether or not this motorcycle has kind of become irrelevant for me. Uh, <laughs> so I have a lot of thoughts about this bike, about my H2. I just wrapped up the Texas Mile event, and boy, I got a lot to talk about. So let's jump aboard our favorite Boosted 2000s crap bike. Let's go take it for a ride. I had to park up and get a photo here at these beautiful flowers. Spring day here in Texas. It is wonderful. Uh, but now i got to get this thing turned around, which is never... This is the, the least fun part about owning a Turbo Hayabusa, is uh, doing the slow speed turnarounds and all that. <laughs> but that's my favorite part, though, is starting her up. Almost let her go in first gear. Never gets old, baby. Never gets old. God dang, I love this bike. <laughs> Let's get her turned around here. Try to get back on that highway. Got some fun. I'm just gonna go this way and see what happens. Alright, so first off, let me tell you guys how insane that mile event was. It's completely broken my brain. Uh, that's been the funniest thing about all this is I jumped on this bike today after having ridden the H2 around for two full days and then doing the mile event with it for two full days. So I've basically been four days in a row of just non-stop H2 action. I jump aboard the Turbo Hayabusa and it's like it's like it's not even fast which is which is just horrible to say i don't want to say that riding this bike doesn't feel fast but after riding a 320 wheel horsepower h2 at the mile event boy everything just seems to kind of slow down a little bit like you're cruising at 80 on the highway on a nice comfortable hayabusa and i feel like i'm miss daisy right now I feel like I'm absolutely just driving Miss Daisy with this thing. And I think that's kind of where it fits in. Like, yes, it's irrelevant if you want the absolute fastest thing ever in the world. Yeah, you should probably just get an H2 or a, a really lightweight nitrous 1,000cc uh, bike or something. But that's not why I love this thing, which it actually just clicked over 30,000 miles. What a gem. I've had this thing for over three years now i bought it stock basically 2007 gen 1 hayabusa i had a lot of fun with it the first year i owned it i did a bunch of stupid mods to it i bought it as a meme but i came to really appreciate and love the platform and in 2021 when i turboed it boy i started loving it even more and in 22 i got the chance to really really appreciate and enjoy this machine for what it was and I started really vibing with this bike, man. I really started to appreciate what this bike is all about. Because it's not an out and out speed demon. Like, yes, it kind of is, but it also kind of isn't. It's super comfortable to ride. It's super enjoyable to use. The H2 has this really snappy, snatchy power band. Whereas the Turbo Hayabusa just feels nice, you know? This feels like you want to pile on me, baby! Never gets old. Spool and boost on a bike. Never gets old, baby. back and it's it's a puppy dog pusa. So yeah, my experience with this bike has been awesome. Yes, it was pretty challenging to get it to be pretty reliable and turnkey after I boosted it, but 
once I got the whole motor rebuilt with Lance Davis and we got the whole thing set up, this thing has literally been rock solid. The only thing that's happened to it was there was one time when uh, the fuel pressure regulator was leaking some gas and I had to pop off the tank and just tighten it up a little bit and it was all good. I don't know why that happened, but it seemed to be okay after that. But you know, you own a bike like this, you always gotta be on top of it. And honestly, I know you guys are gonna think it's sacrilege, but I really do like this thing way more than the H2. Uh, I didn't think the H2 was going to be so extreme and so demonic and so crazy. It's genuinely not enjoyable to ride on the street the way it is now. I actually have something really cool planned with the H2 that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. And you guys comment down below if you try to guess what I'm going to be planning with the H2 because I'll tell you this right now. I don't think I'm going to keep it. I'm just going to say that, and for those OGs that are really watching this video and checking it out, I don't think I'm going to keep the H2. What I want to do is keep this bike. This is my OG missile bike, my stupid fast bike. I adore this thing, and honestly, it needs some love. It needs some real love to get going and to feel good, because right now, this poor thing, you know, look at, look at this all right here. It's all falling apart, flappy. I think it could use a cosmetic update. I think we could go top to bottom on it. And I think we can prepare this motorcycle to do proper Texas Mile runs. Because that's my takeaway from the Texas Mile. I really, really enjoyed that event. It was so much fun, man. It was like the most low-key, laid-back track day I'd ever been to. Everyone's just hanging out, super good vibes, super good energy. Maurice from Boom's Tune was there. A bunch of great people really having a great time, and I want more of that. And it's the safest way to go super duper fast. Like, you know, you can pull a little stuff like that on the street, buck 40, a buck 50 for two, three seconds, no problem, like that's safe. But to really feel what these machines can do, man, you gotta go out to a proper strip. <laughs> so yeah man i think this bike it's so much more stable feeling than that h2 and i don't think the h2 deserves to be kind of slammed and stretched i think it looks better when it's kind of more normal looking and i don't want to just completely destroy that bike you know i want to keep it in a relatively stock configuration so that people can continue to enjoy it but this bike I've already boosted it, I've already lowered it. If I put a stretch on it and we safety wire it and prepare it for drag rate or uh, the mile events, we can have something that is truly great at the mile. Because this motor will happily produce more horsepower. We're running uh, pump gas on this thing. You know, we're making 270 at the wheel with pump gas. If we wanted to, all we have to do. I've, I've said this for almost a year now and I'm terrified to do it on the street because of how the H2 feels but all we got to do for this machine is to simply put race gas in it and pump up the boost we can get 320 340 wheel 350 wheel no problem and I feel like the way it's set up it's just so much more docile to ride than the H2 and it's so much easier to ride than the H2 I've never had an issue where this bike's pulling draw on the battery and nuking itself to death and dying. It just leaks a little bit of oil, but come on, it's a turbo boost, so of course it's gonna do that. So that's my goal. I really wanna get this thing to be a mile event bike, a proper mile bike, but here's the tricky part. I still love riding this thing on the street. It is super fun to still use this motorcycle on the street. I know it's stupid, I understand, but come on, a squid's gonna squid, right? You wanna ride something like this and have some fun. It's so silly. But look what it can do in slow speeds. Because of that turbo, doesn't feel that crazy right now. I'm just cruising along, happily doing the speed limit, no problems, enjoying myself here on this bike. This is great. <laughs> you can take this bike to the coffee shop, no problem. <laughs> so I wanna build this kind of like hybrid Texas mile 
crunching bike slash streetable bike. So what I want to do is cosmetically completely take care of this bike. I want it to look amazing. I really do. We have to get a, uh, a better steering stabilizer on it or a steering stabilizer at all because I don't think it has one. Maybe down low actually it has one. I can't remember. Um, some bikes have them underneath the triple tree and it's been a while since I go look at this bike. I think it does have one. And uh, got to do that, got to get the dead man switch, got to get it safety wired, because I, I got to be honest, guys, I really, I got addicted at the mile event, man. I really did. I wanted to chase higher miles. I wanted to have some fun. It was a really, really, a really fun time. Really cool event. So yeah, I want to get this thing to what I know it could be, you know. I know this motorcycle could be so awesome at the mile event. This is a turbo boost. This is what it deserves to do. It doesn't deserve to just be out on the street once a month and, and looking all sad like this with all the plastics almost coming off of it. This bike deserves better. And I want to give it better, man, because that was just so much fun. I'm also just really curious as to what this bike could really do when push came to shove, you know? What kind of speeds could I really produce with like a 340 wheel horsepower turbo Busa fully set up for a mile event? I really think I could get into the 225 Club because I gotta be honest, the 200 Club was kind of easy. Uh, I posted up on Instagram and you guys saw in the videos here on YouTube, I did 206 on my third ever run on that H2 and my top speed indicated on GPS was 211 miles an hour. So I really don't think that 200 is that crazy on a bike. Uh, it was just a bucket list item for me and I really wanted to do it because not many people can lay claim to uh, you know, the 200 mile per hour club. There's actually several big, big racers and stuff that I know that have never gotten the chance to go 200 plus because you gotta really commit. I mean, I made a whole weekend out of it. I bought a bike for it. I really committed to that goal just as it's a really cool thing to say but those who are in the know they know that 225 is the real deal that's where the boys are separated from the men uh, pulling 225 miles an hour in a standing mile is no joke and that's going to take some serious time preparation energy and effort but i want the t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> I got the t-shirt for uh, the 200 mile per hour club and that feels pretty cool but uh, 225 man if you know you know you know what I mean <laughs> but yeah I will wear that t-shirt with pride um, I am now telling everybody I know that I went over 200 miles per hour on a motorcycle because it's just the coolest thing ever and it just makes me really excited to try it again and do it again and it's a really cool thing because unlike club racing where you're doing it all the time, like you're, you're prepping the bikes, you're training, you're going out once a month during the season, you know, you're doing a lot. You know, the mile event, it's so much more chill. Like I said, the atmosphere at the mile events are awesome. People are hanging out, having a good time. It's not competitive at all. It's really just you and your machine. And I like that. I like that it's just you, yourself, your personal goals, whatever you want to do, and uh, you can go out there and achieve them. And that's, you know, for this weekend, when I just went, that's what I did. I, I got the H2. I said I wanted to go over 200. Got it done. Met my goal. Stayed safe. And that's all I cared about. It was awesome. And I'm just excited to do the same with this bike. My goals now would be 225 with a Turbo Busa. Because that would be really, you know, after all the months, time, energy, the years that I've put into this thing, um... That would be really amazing to have it all cinched together and have a 225 mile per hour uh, mile bike. I think that would really be amazing. Man, I mean, look at this thing. Slow speeds. It's absolutely just cruising down the boulevard here. This is fantastic. <laughs> it's such a stark difference over that H2, man. This boost is comfortable. It likes the low throttles. That turbo doesn't let you really pop it out of control. What's not to love on the turbo Busa? What's not to love? So guys, that's gonna wrap up my thoughts on whether or not I think that my H2 has kind of made my turbo Busa irrelevant. I've got some really cool plans coming up with the bike that uh, I'm gonna tell you guys about as those plans come to fruition. 
especially that H2. We are going to hopefully over the next six months or so slowly work on this bike, get it to look better, get it to perform better, get it to be set up for the mile. And then we're going to see if we can pull 225 with this bike because that would be the ultimate goal with this machine. And that would honestly be like a kind of like I put a bow on this bike and I'd be like, I did it, you know. I went 225 with it. I'd probably just drain it of all its fluids at that point and just keep it as a nice, uh, a nice trophy almost, you know. I achieved the ultimate Turbo High Boost experience, but I haven't done it yet. And that's the next thing I want to do because that's the nature of the human spirit, baby. You keep chasing higher and higher. Do more and do better. Guys, I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks so much for checking it out. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Well, well, well. What do we have here? A mighty fine steel horse, if I ever did say so myself. They don't make these at the rodeo anymore. Let me just, <clears throat> just swing a leg over this bike. Now, if you want to see me spool some boost, Gotta click this video right over here. This year, Turbo Hibosa might be featured in the next video you see here on Yama Noob. Tell you what, partner, I'm gonna turn off the lights. I mean, this bike gonna do some things.